Hello, Fly Mullo here, and it has been a long time since I've made a new video, but you know, patch 2.6 has come to Rift, and with it some exciting new stuff, so it seemed like as good a time as any to make a new video. Now for this video, I'll be taking a look at the new Dreamweaver profession, and what it's done to the economy in the short term, with what I expect will be the long-term ramifications. So for all you folks out there that are looking to make some platinum, uh, this video should help you out, especially uh, over the course of this specific weekend for certain. Uh, now later I'll be talking about part one of the Air Saga world event and giving you a couple of other updates from around the web. So to start, let's take a look at Dreamweaver. Now this is a very smart addition to the crafting family for Tryon, considering that a lot of the folks who spend money on Rift are doing so to enhance their dimensions. The Dreamweaving, or the Dreamweaver profession, gets you a lot of new items for your dimension, uh, plus actually allows you to craft keys to completely new dimensions that haven't been in the game before until, until this week. And you can use all of this for yourself or sell it on the auction. Uh, another cool thing, by the way, is it's not just items. There's also a lot of particle effects that you can buy. So there's lighting effects, smoke effects, um, even some, some kind of weather-altering effects. So it's got a lot of cool stuff to help enhance the look and feel of your dimension. Uh, now, there really are no companion professions that go along with Dreamweaver. You'll use ingredients from skinning, gathering, mining, and fishing, along with bolts of cloth from outfitting, so you will be reliant on several other professions and probably the auction house to keep, uh, to, you know, help you out. Now, the primary ingredient in the Dreamweaver profession is called Dream Ribbon, and it comes from artifacts. As soon as you train for Dreamweaver, you are given the ability to break down artifacts into Dream Ribbon, and Dream Ribbon is used in every single recipe in Dreamweaver. Lots and lots of Dream Ribbon will be used. In fact, just getting to level 70 in Dreamweaving, I used, I believe it was about 270 Dream Ribbon, and it only gets a lot more costly from there. Uh, the amount of Dream Ribbon used goes up exponentially. Now, as I mentioned, Dream Ribbon comes from artifacts, and the ratio is actually one to one. One white artifact gives you one white, or one Dream Ribbon. There's no color coding in Dream Ribbon. Though. But one white artifact gives you one Dream r Ribbon. Now, a green artifact will give you two, and a blue artifact will give you five. And this is always the same regardless of what zone or instance the artifact came from and regardless of the level of the Dreamweaver, meaning that you can break down any and all artifacts as a level 1 Dreamweaver. Now, as of right now, there is not a whole lot of detailed information on the web about Dreamweaving, but uh, probably just a little bit later this evening, I will have a guide that takes you from at least 1 to 100 in Dreamweave, Dreamweaver. Uh, that'll be up at soulsearchersguide.com. Uh, the link will be below this video, and so, and I do plan on taking that up to about up to 375. But uh, it could take me quite a while to get the guide all the way up there because uh, I'm not made of money in the game, and yet I don't have a gatherer that's all the way up yet to three, you know, to 375. So it could take me a while to get all the materials needed what to get mean? this guide up. But I will do it as quickly as possible. So keep an eye on that. Now I want to take a look at a couple of the dimensions that I've opened up here and am able to craft. Uh, the first one is Baralt's Ascent. Uh, this one is a little bit cluttered. I mean, it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool look, and it's got some cool background noises like the frogs and stuff. So uh, definitely atmospherically, it's kind of an interesting dimension. It's very small, and there's already enough stuff in here that... To me, really, this dimension gets much more interesting depending on how high it goes and how high you can build. But otherwise, uh, I didn't care for this one too much. Uh, the next one was Tower Meadow. This one looks a little bit better if you have your ground, ground clutter density on, as most of Rift does. If you can get your ground clutter density on, it, it looks really great. Now, as for me, I have some sort of a glitch, um, the bug that's never been fixed, which makes my ground clutter just blink incredibly annoyingly all the time, so I don't have mine on ever, so I can't show you that right now. Um, but at any rate, it's just a blank canvas, Tower Meadow. So it's it's kind of it's kind of boring uh, and not a lot to look at in the background. I guess I would enjoy the blank canvas more if there was a lot to look at in the background, but there's really not. Uh, I would also enjoy the blank canvas a little more, I think, if the ground was flat, but it's not. 
So all in all, it seems like to me, this particular blank canvas could be a lot better. But just the idea of having kind of this blank canvas to work with is kind of cool. So I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy being able to create a dimension here. And then the next one that I open up is Stone Grove. And Stone Grove, actually, I like quite a bit. Um, this is, unlike the, uh, the Tower Meadow, uh, this one, if you've spent any time in, in uh, Scarwood Reach, you will probably remember this area really quickly. And, and it's kind of a fun area. And it, there's just a, there's a lot of potential with this giant tree in the middle. This dimension is is a fairly good size dimension. It doesn't seem like it at first, but it really is a pretty good size dimension with just enough stuff to look at and just enough open ground that I think that this one uh, is one that would be pretty cool. Now at the moment, I don't recommend actually creating any of these with your Dreamweaver profession, and especially. Uh, if you're looking to sell things, um, you kind of sometimes look at those big ticket items and go, oh, people are going to buy these. Yeah, don't do it. Actually, right now, you can get all three of these dimensions, or at least you so far this week you could, um, for much less than it costs to make them. Uh, you can get, I got, I bought all three of these on auction for less than just the, the dream ribbon itself would have cost, let alone the other ingredients that go along with it. Um, which kind of comes into the next section which is economy um what happens anytime a new profession is introduced into a game is the economy kind of goes crazy um another thing that happens is people just think oh this would work and then they they kind of screw themselves for money so all these people that are making these dimensions is a really good example they're making dimensions thinking oh this will sell no no they won't you just lost money so there was no reason to make those dimensions um so taking a look at the economy uh, the first and obvious way to make money with the introduction of the Dreamweaver is by finding and selling your artifacts. Now, to that end, if you've been on the fence about whether or not to subscribe to Rift and you haven't done so yet, uh, you may want to consider doing that now because of this one wonderful and profitable ability, the Patron's Artifact Tracking. Patron's Artifact Tracking, uh, what it does is it gets you a half hour. It'll put up artifacts on your minimap, any nearby artifacts. You'll be able to locate them on your minimap for 30 minutes. Now, in 30 minutes, and that's per day, you get a charge, a 30-minute charge, and you can hold up to seven. So, and, and that's per character, too. So if you have a lot of characters, you're, you're, you're never, ever going to run out of charges. You'll be able to keep hunting artifacts all the time. Um, so my experience so far has been that on a bad run, like if I'm competing with a bunch of other players for the same nodes, uh, I might only come up with like 20 artifacts in that 30 minutes. But on a good run, I can get like 50 artifacts. And that's a lot of cash. And by the way, although it's really easy to go to like uh, Free March and, and get artifacts and you don't have to worry about fighting anything, so it's super easy. If you go to some of the, the zones in Storm Legion, you might actually have better luck. They're not farmed as much. And, they, and because they're not farmed as much, you tend to find a lot more blues. And if you're specifically looking to either break down the artifacts or sell them on option, auction, then blues are a really good thing to find. So definitely don't ignore those higher level zones just because you might have to fight some things here and there. All right, take a look at some of the things that you can take advantage of in order to make yourself some platinum. Now, one of the things that I actually did not expect, which happened right away, was Rift Exchange prices went down. Now, it makes sense, I suppose, when you think about it, because what's happening is people are going, oh, crap, this is expensive. i got to buy Dream Ribbon if I want to level fast. So I'm going to buy some Rex and sell it. And so what was consistently 1,100 Platinum for Rift Exchange on my shard, as you can see, is now going for, I mean, a lot of them are going for less than 1,100. I would expect that to continue, especially through this weekend, if not further into the future. Um, on Tuesday or Wednesday, I actually saw uh, some selling for like 950 as a buyout price. Now, if you know anything about the economics, uh, you know, credits, which is what you get with Rift Exchange, they're not really set by the market. And this is something that I think a lot of people just haven't figured out, is that credits are not the value of Rift Exchange is not set by the market in the game. Not really. The value of Rift Exchange is set by what you can buy at the store. Now, the value of credits that you can 
buy stuff with at the store is about the triumph tried to keep it about one to one versus platinum in the game now the difference is that credits actually have a wider buying power because they can buy things that platinum cannot buy so credits really are are technically more valuable than platinum but they're at least a one to one ratio which means that anything below 1250 platinum in terms of the cost of rex is worth it it's a buyer's market it's a good deal so if you've got a lot of platinum a thousand platinum is a really good deal for a rift exchange if you can find it for lower than a thousand i definitely would recommend buying it for two reasons number one it's a phenomenal deal and gives you a lot more buying power than your platinum does number two it's very likely that this is going to go back up that once all the dust is settled and and the dream weavers all pretty much have what they need the the rex is going to go back up and so you could probably buy some and hold on to it and make some money back later on when the prices are back up to what they should be which 1100 is still low but 1100 is where i would think that they'll probably go back up too if they don't you know my advice is for platinum makers never ever 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 sell rex it's just not worth it platinum is not worth what rex is going for right now you can do a lot better just by buying credits and spending credits as opposed to buying rex and selling it on auction all right anyway that's that's a little bit of rambling it's a little bit of a sidetrack artifacts artifact well i guess it's pointless to type in artifacts we'll go here to miscellaneous and we'll go to collectibles and there we go artifacts on wednesday the price was ridiculous ridiculous as you can see now artifacts are no longer ridiculous they're right back to about where they were maybe just a little bit higher but they're about back to what they were what happened was that on wednesday there was 199 pages worth of artifacts on thursday there was about 179 pages worth of artifacts and on friday there was 200 and something pages worth of artifacts what that meant is more people were hoarding these things than were buying them now you can see here that we only need to get to what page five before they're really starting to become really overpriced again but your best buy right now is going to be these cheap artifacts dream ribbon on the other hand let's uh, look for that uh unit price one plat 36 gold so you definitely don't want to purchase uh dream ribbon if you can purchase artifacts for much less unless you just don't care about your platinum and you don't want to waste time you know breaking down uh uh your artifacts so you know if you're in that category but for people who are interested in actually making a profit by on dream ribbon whether you're dream weaving whether you're a dream weaver or not um you definitely artifacts are the better buy than are than is dream ribbon now that's right now that could all change you know it might be later on that there's just a crap ton of dream ribbon on the auction and not a lot of artifacts and it could all change now if you're not a dream weaver but you are interested in making money off people who are i would recommend at least getting one dream weaver on one of your high level characters so that you can break down artifacts and that way whether artifacts or dream ribbon are the more expensive you're covered now um along those lines too as you're buying artifacts if you buy artifacts on the auction for the most part you want to avoid greens and blues especially remember greens are worth two times a white a blue is worth five times a white and right now in auction i can guarantee you blues are going for a whole heck of a lot more so don't buy those um obviously they have more value than just five times a white because they're rare and they fill out sets that people need so people can sell them for more and that's fine but as a dream weaver trying to level don't buy those blues unless you see them ridiculously cheap because it's just it's not worth it now another thing that happened and this was an interesting thing that hadn't that again nobody i don't think knew it was going to happen bolt of burlap bolt of burlap um this is this is actually much lower than what it's been i would expect that this will go back up this weekend it probably will mellow out a little bit as we go but for right now great way to make some platinum bolt of burlap um a bolt of burlap to make costs two burlap cloth and if you look at burlap cloth that's also going for ridiculous prices 
um, 10 are being bought out for two platinum, so 20 gold a piece um, on burlap cloth. And those are just the first ones, you know, some of these are going to get bought out this weekend. And then you're looking at, you know, down here, someone's trying to sell it for a platinum per burlap cloth. Now, I doubt that they're going to be very successful selling burlap cloth um, at these prices, maybe those lower ones. But bolts of burlap are selling. I sold 25 bolts of burlap on auction for a stack of 25. I sold for 33 platinum. Now, just to give you an idea, bolts of burlap can be found in the starting zones. In free March, before I sold that stack of 25, I was actually using it for my Dreamweaver. Um, I was able to go to free March and get 60 uh, burlap cloths, which translates to 30 bolts of burlap in 15 minutes. So in 15 minutes, I essentially made, uh, well, I sold 25 of them for 33 platinum. So right now in 15 minutes, you'd be making about one platinum a piece. Um, you could make 30 platinum right now uh, in 15 minutes just by farming burlap. They drop off, you know, any type of um, abyssal type, cre you know, abyssal guys, you know, the soldiers, the men, any of the humanoids in Silverwood and Free March, for the most part, except at the the higher range, have cotton instead of burlap. But the about level six through sixteen, I think, uh, creatures in those zones should have burlap. So if you find a good spot to farm it where things respawn quickly, you can make a crap ton of money. Now this is really the only kind of alternate ingredient that did well in terms of of increase in platinum. And the reason for that is because uh, there is really no other item that goes to the Dreamweaver profession um, that, that you need a lot of. Uh, you need a ton of these bolts of burlap in order just to kind of get started. I, I think it's in the neighborhood of 70 uh, bolts of burlap uh, at the beginning of the Dreamweaver. So everybody needs them right now, and that's why the prices are going crazy. Once most of the Dreamweavers get beyond that first hump, then there's not going to be any particular item that they need anymore. You know, they're going to need some logs. They're going to need some tin. They're going to need some copper. They're going to need some, you know, uh, different kinds of cloth. But never one specific thing like the bolt of burlap. So get this while the getting's good. Right now you can make a ton of money, but give it a week. You know, next weekend, probably not as much the case. Okay, so that's dream weaving and how to make money in Dreamweaver. I keep saying dream weaving. It kind of interchanges, but the actual profession is called Dreamweaver. Anyway, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and I think it's an excellent addition to the game for the most part. Now, what's not a particularly excellent addition to the game is the Air Saga. Oh my gosh, the Air Saga. Uh, I just, you know, you know what, Tryon? Hire a writer. Hire a writer. I don't know if it's their accountant or their lead programmer or a guy who knows how to draw, but I doubt it's a guy who knows how to draw because he would have some creativity. So I'm betting that their storyboard person is an accountant. That's just, I mean, I have to assume that because it's like their, their storylines got significantly better at the launch of Storm Legion when compared to the original game. But it's just, I mean, it's just getting painful. And the Air Saga, unfortunately, is no exception. So I found the first quest. You find the quest here in Meridian, and then you're told to go and talk to Ash Asha Katari. And so you go and talk to her, and she tells you to go to the Chancel of Labors, and you're supposed to learn about Lord Protector Nerval. Um, yeah, I've, okay, I've got six characters now who've been through the storyline of Iron Pine Peak. I kind of am familiar with him. Uh, she also wants you to complete some daily quests. Now, these are daily quests that have been in the game for months. Okay, so I've done these daily quests before. Why they're pretending that, you know, it's it's like they didn't want to work. And so they said, you know what, we just, we need to throw together an event. So what are we going to do? Well, we'll develop some lame story and we'll have people do dailies. It's like, are you kidding me here? So I go to Nerval and he introduces himself. And I'm forced to ask him about who he is, and I'm forced to ask him about what the Ice Watch is, even though I've got six characters that have been celebrated as heroes in Iron Pine Peak. But whatever. Whatever. Okay? So now uh, he sends me and says, all right, go do these dailies that have been in the game for a long, long time. And, and by the way, these are the worst 
dailies that have ever been invented. Yes, they're easy to complete, but oh my gosh. So for example, uh, for this particular daily, you have to, to build this baluster thing. You gotta build this, and you do that by clicking on this sparkling spot on the ground. And then you have to build defenses. And the first time I did this, it's like you have to drop your IQ by about 75 points in order to understand how to do this quest, because it's so incredibly stupid that you're sitting here going, did I miss some instructions? Because I, I don't understand. And then when you drop your IQ by about 75 points, you go, oh, I get it. Okay, I'm supposed to build defenses by clicking on this green thing. And oh, voila. So I got to build three of those. Oh my gosh, that's hard. So I'll click on this green thing three times. I'll click on three of them. Now I'm supposed to recruit people and you think, oh, wait a minute, it doesn't tell me how to, do I have an item? Do I have a horn? How do I recruit people? Do I go find them somewhere? Oh, no, wait, you see, there's more green spots on the ground. So you just click those, you see, and then you've recruited some people. Oh my gosh. The other one, by the way, is, is less stupid because at least it's a little bit obvious. Like, you don't have to lower your IQ to do it. You'll just feel like the only way you could possibly enjoy it is if you do lower your IQ because what you're supposed to be doing is training these people and all you do is click on these powers when they light up. And they're not hard and they're just in order from left to right and you just click on them when they light up. I mean, my gosh. And you're forced to do this now in this saga even though you've been avoiding doing these because they're completely stupid and pointless. And I guess nobody's been playing these, and so the folks at Tryon went, well, it must just be people don't know about them. Let's put them in our saga. Or it was just they were super incredibly lazy, which I think is probably more the case. Or they just need to hire somebody. Just hire somebody. You know, while, while some people are working on Dreamweaver, and that's really awesome, hire somebody else. Or just stop doing events. Because, oh my gosh, it's so bad. Anyway, so uh, then you go after you're done with this and you, you do this uh, little race around the area. Uh, it tells you to go fast because you're on a time limit, but really you could walk and you could smell some roses and you could do some artifact gathering and you could do like some extra killing and skinning and all kinds of things and still finish this on time. It's just, it's ridiculously stupid. And then you go and you do this quest called Right of the Mind. Now this one's awesome, because le let me just tell you, uh, it tells you that you have to go study and then come back and take a test. And so you pick up the quest and you see a little, little marker where you go and you kneel down for like seven seconds or something and study and you come back and take the test. And then you realize that, no, 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 you literally have to study. You have to go to the library, start clicking on sparkly books, and read them, which some of them are many, many, many pages. And then you have to do that multiple times with multiple books, and then you've got to study them, because then you've got to come back and take this quiz, which will be a trivia question, which will be from one of these probably, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing eight books. Are you, are you kidding me? You have to study books in the game and take a quiz in order to move forward because somebody thought that would be fun now if you get one wrong by the way now you have to pick up the quest again and you have to go back downstairs to where the waypoint is and you have to kneel down for seven more seconds and then come back up and take the quiz holy crap okay so I'm going to spare you guys all of that. You have sat through this many minutes of a video. It's probably the longest video I've ever done. Uh, and so below in the description, uh, you're going to find uh, the what I believe to be the only eight questions you might be asked. I think there's only eight questions. They're listed below the video with the answers in slightly for shortened form. <clears throat> so you don't have to go through what I went through to get through this ridiculously stupid question. Now, after that, uh, basically, you're going to have to go seal some rifts. I'll probably do that over the weekend. I haven't done that yet. And then you'll finish up phase one, essentially. Um, and then and then that's pretty much it for the saga for phase one. I hope it gets better. I'm not holding my breath. Because let's face it, I mean, this is... they All they really cared about here was dreamweaving. 
I, why they feel that they have to do a crappy event, I have no idea, especially when it's going on on top of the Valentine's Day event anyway. So I don't know what they're thinking, but this is awful. It's just awful. Oh, yes, and there's also this cool storyline where you see a vision of the future in which Crucia escapes, even though she already escaped, uh, reigned terror over the lands in of Bravain and Duskin, and then died. So I guess you're going back in time to see a vision of the future that might be... I mean, it's just... It's so convoluted and stupid that I can't even describe how frustrating this chain is because it's so convoluted and stupid. And now I'll tell you how I really feel. Uh, at any rate, so that's that. Around the web, I'm not going to show you what's going on around the web because I'm having trouble with uh, trying to record my desktop. But um, at any rate, around the web, there's a couple of things. First off, Riftcraft, uh, as far as I can tell, has gone out of business. Riftcraft.com. So there is another option for you. And that's over at poniversity.com, and I will have that link for you down below this video in the description. Um, and that has all the guides with the exception of Dreamweaver, um, but it has all the other professions. So if you're looking for a crafting guide, uh, that is a good updated place to go. As far as I know, it's the only good updated place to go. I may or may not do more crafting guides other than Dreamweaver on soulsearchersguide.com. I don't know yet. Uh, part of it, I suppose, depends on how much traffic comes into the Dreamweaver guide, whether or not it's worth it. Um, if you don't know, soulsearchersguide.com, where you can find Soul Searcher's leveling guide, uh, did go free toward the end of last year. It's 100% free. Part of that is because I'm no longer updating because Tryon keeps changing their their leveling progression so at any rate uh it's there it has not been updated recently what that means is that the vast majority of the guide is still accurate gloamwood is a big big exception gloamwood is not accurate so if you're a guardian that would be the only zone you'd really have a hard time with except for iron pine peak iron pine peak was completely changed um of course that kind of jacks up all of the higher levels of the guide because the guide is not written zone by zone it's written level by level and since iron pine peak was dropped 15 levels uh that kind of jacks up a lot of things but at least the other zones uh that are in the level 40 to 50 range which are droughtland shimmer sand and still more are still accurate and all of the other zones below that are accurate with the exception of iron pine peak and gloamwood so it's still a great reference the storm legion zones are absolutely accurate they're they're very very good references for you and it's free okay so for leveling solo leveling and questing that's free now just on a side note from level 40 to 50 if you are questing as your primary source of leveling and you're not doing pvp and you're not doing instant adventures or whatever you're simply not going to have enough content um they removed iron pine peak which was about a third of the quests in that area there simply is no longer enough content if you are in the 40 to 50 range your primary is solo player and you can't get yourself leveled um you're just the best option is to join some pvps on the dailies the daily pvp quests um and instant adventures that's just the absolute you're, you're just going to have to do something like that uh, probably instant adventures maybe pvp if you enjoy it and if your faction tends to win um those are your options but you'll need supplement for sure um at any rate soul searcher's guide is free it is still mostly accurate. It's still a really great source of information. So head on over there if you like, if you've got lower levels that are leveling. Um, now, if you have just hit 60, recently hit 60, or you hit 60 a long time ago and you still are not sure what to do. Um, earlier, I guess last month, Seton posted uh, uh, the level, the one level 60 guide for PvE for Endgame. Okay? So, and that is over on the Rift forums. That link is also below. Um, it is a phenomenal uh, guide. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know because I'd always been focused on leveling and editing the, the, the Soul Searcher's Guide and, and doing videos for leveling. And so I read this and went, wow, this is cool. So here's some good stuff to do. Um, Seton goes through all the currencies, the different uh, progression paths to try and get yourself uh, raid geared or you know whatever you want to do. He even talks about some of the puzzles. Um, he has a couple of links to videos. Uh, it's just a fantastic guide if you're a new level 60 to figure out what the heck to do now. And it's, I don't know if it's all inclusive, but it definitely includes a lot of the different activities and also a lot of the progressions that you kind of want to go on as you journey into the level 60 uh, endgame. All right, so that is it. 
think this is about the longest video I've ever made, but I guess it stands to reason since I haven't done a video for a long time. Uh, so, that's it. Uh, I'll do some more videos. I actually will probably be doing a review here pretty soon of another game, uh, but not one of the big ones, which are still in closed beta, and I don't have I don't have press passes. But but I'll probably be doing a review soon, so look for that, and I'll probably be doing some more Rift videos as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you can make a lot of platinum. And so thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.